If you don't count the Digimon and One Piece movies he made, Mamoru Hosoda has now made five original anime films. I think it's time to talk about the themes that weave through his filmography so far. Mamoru Hosoda's most obvious theme is that of family. It permeates all his movies and is even a strong theme of his work in Digimon. Every single one of his films centers on family relationships. Even The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, where this is least obvious, still features back and forth between Makoto and her sister. And what's lovely is that so many directors make those families in constant conflict. Harsh fathers, disapproving mothers, etc. His families are strong, just going through a rough patch. Typically, as some of its members are eager to leave the nest, like the boy in Wolf Children and the boy in The Boy and the Beast. And that leads to the second theme, freedom. In The Girl Who Left Through Time, Makoto wants the freedom to fix her mistakes. In Wolf Children, the boy, Ame, wants the freedom to live as a wolf. In The Boy and the Beast, Kyuto wants the freedom to live his own life in his own way. And in Mirai, Kun wants the freedom desired by all young children to do absolutely anything he wants. And what's interesting is that each film explores freedom from a different angle because there are different kinds of freedom. Makoto's desire and Kun's desire are presented as understandable but fundamentally perverse. You can't really fix the past and doing whatever you want has terrible consequences. In contrast, Ame and Kyuta both get pretty much exactly the freedom they're looking for. The freedom to explore their own paths and be themselves. Incidentally, a lot of people think that Japanese always suppress the individuality of individuals in favor of the group. While there's a little truth to that when it comes to like group decision making, that does not mean that individual desire is always ignored in Japanese society. And Hosoda's films show this in how its characters are often clearly defined individuals who not only struggle to fit in, but also forge a unique destiny in life. Which leads to another theme of Hasoda's films, Adolescent Crisis. Now, granted, this is a common theme in most anime, but it's worth calling out. Makoto's definitely feeling her oats in The Girl Who Left Through Time, Kenji is going out with a girl for the first time in Summer Wars, and indeed, Natsuki deals with the death of a family member. At the end of Wolf Children, the kids have to figure out how they should live, and of course, The Boy and the Beast is all about adolescent crisis. But what's nice is that Hosoda does not treat his adolescents as either frustrated brats or as hyper-competent heroes trampled down by a society that doesn't understand them. They're people in transition, no longer children, not yet adults, starting to take charge of their lives and discovering it's not easy. And I think that ties into another theme, that of identity. Hasoda's characters are usually trying to figure out what's right for them, and they're often surrounded by characters who are very confident in themselves and have kind of figured it out, like the grandmother in Summer Wars. Indeed, the subject of identity is strongest in Hasoda's most recent film so far as of recording this, Mirai. We see not only Kuhn's exploration of his family history and what that means for his makeup, but even his parents talk about how having children changed them. But what's also nice is that you never end one of his films feeling like that identity is perfectly forged. It's still changing. Moving on to our final theme, possibly obvious but worth calling out, the four seasons are well represented in Hosoda's works, particularly Summer. I mean, obviously Summer Wars, but in general, the seasons are represented very strongly. And he does this by actually focusing on them visually. We'll cut to a massive bank of clouds in a deep blue sky, or a bed of flowers in bloom. Indeed, in Wolf Children, he uses winter not just as a backdrop, but as something that almost kills Ame. Now there's a theme. So that's it, a brief look at some of the major themes of Mamoru Hosoda's filmography. Very brief overview, I know, but I wanted to identify a few major themes to kind of get your mind going and invite you to look at his films yourself. His films do reward study, and so I hope you find things that I haven't noticed, because it's always exciting digging into somebody's filmography for something and noticing a theme, noticing a trend that others haven't. So 
I hope you do.